Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Here, an artist's conception of how the feat was accomplished. A three-stage rocket. Number one, the booster in the class of an intercontinental missile. Its weight estimated at 50 tons. The smaller second stage took over at 5,000 miles an hour and carried on to the highest point reached. 500 miles up, the artificial moon is boosted to a speed counterbalancing the pull of gravity and released. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite, one of the great scientific feats of the age. Soviet space program. From its beginning in the 1930s to the collapse of the Soviet state, the Soviet space program aggressively pushed back the frontiers of science. More than a competitor, the Soviet preoccupation with space exploration drove the United States out of an unpalatable fear of being left behind. From the Russian pioneer, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who proposed the first multi-stage rocket in 1929, to the 1957 launch of Sputnik 1, the first satellite, and Laika, the first Earthling in space, the Soviets dominated the space race. By 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin had become the first man in space and the first to orbit the Earth. Three years later, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space 20 years before Sally Ride stepped onto a space shuttle. Milestones in space exploration were Soviet victories. The first interplanetary probe, Venera 1, 1961. The first spacewalk, Alexei Leonov, 1965. В Советском Союзе впервые в истории осуществлен выход человека из корабля в космическое пространство. Это подлинные документальные кадры. Они сняты 18 марта 1965 года автоматической кинокамерой, установленной на борту космического корабля «Восход-2». Пилотирует корабль Павел Беляев. The first space station, Salyut 1, 1971. By the mid-1970s, the Apollo-Soyuz joint U.S.-Soviet project marginally slowed the fierce competition, spelling a new era of cooperation that would continue to grow after the fall of communism. Three, Three two, two, engine one, sequence start. Zero. One, zero, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, Roger, tower clear. Five meters distance. Three meters. Drop. Three meters. Okay, net drop. One meter. Contact. Capture. The Soyuz has three compartments. The orbital module, the descent module, and the instrument compartment. Each compartment has a different architecture and a specific purpose. The orbital module, or living compartment, is equipped with sleeping bags, food, and a toilet. So here we are in the Soyuz. This is what we call the Beto, the living compartment, Bitovoy Atsek in Russian. Um, it also has a little bathroom. It's not as good as the other bathrooms. So we try not to use it too much. It has drinking water in it if we need something to drink. And then, of course, it's filled up with a lot of cargo uh, for us. The instrument compartment, not accessible to the astronauts, houses the oxygen and propellant tanks, thrusters, the onboard computer, and a number of sensors. From the descent module, the three crew members monitor all information about the spacecraft and the ISS from ground data, the onboard computers, and an optical display of the view from a periscope mounted on the outside. 